Let's start this thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, today I have John Tucker, and we're going to be talking some shop. So, uh, John Tucker, say hi to th the folks. Hello. Uh, go right in the mic for a second. Let's see how loud you are. Uh, testing, one, two. Oh, I'm going to boost check, you up check, a little check, bit. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. There we go. Nice. There we go. All right. So, um, how did you get into stop motion animation world? Oh, boy. That goes, I guess. We're going to start right at the beginning, basically. Really going yeah, really yeah, far back. Really far back, yeah. So, well, I went to school, uh, I grew up in Mississippi, uh, and I went to school at University of Southern Mississippi, and that's where I was introduced to film. We had access to Super 8 cameras, Bolexes, and I think we had an Airy SR2 or something, but we had an animation class, and, it, and we also had a, a down shooter. So I learned to uh, do, you know, moves on titles and graphics and also shooting cartoon-type stuff, and so I learned to operate the... Uh, the platen and all that stuff, and so that's I guess where it started studying animation in college. You oh, know, cool. yeah, yeah. And I liked it, and I liked it, but then I, you know, moved out west and started working as a PA on music videos and things like that. So it was uh, that's cool. Those are like what music videos did you start off on? Oh, I think the first music video I worked on when I came into town was like a Beach Boys video. You know, oh, sick. What year was that? Ninety. You know, was it Kokomo. So, you know, it, what was it? It was it was like for a movie um, with that little redheaded kid and the dog, and it it was like so it was a theme for the soundtrack theme for the movie. Oh wow! And it was like some gestation of the Beach Boys that included John Stamos. Yep. You know yep, that was around that was around the Full House years. Yeah. 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 So Crazy. it was interesting, and it was an experience. You know, working in Hollywood like that, and mm. so I stayed working for that company. It was David Naylor and Associates. I worked for them for a little while, and then uh, w went to work uh, for another music video producer. He was uh, Paul Flattery, and he had done like he'd produced the Billy Jean video okay. and stuff like that. So he was a huge producer, and it was always, nice. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then you uh, you did some work with Fred Stir. Yes, yes, that that came about around. Uh, mm, I'd say I started working with Fred in '93. Okay. Or 94, somewhere in there. And uh, we became uh, fast friends, and we kept doing jobs and stuff together after the first couple. And uh, I enjoyed working with Fred. It was, uh, it was always great working cool. at Fred Stir Animation. Yeah, and if people don't know who Fred Stir is. Fred Stir uh, did the music videos for uh, Tool. So it's Prison Sex, and what was the other? Sober? Sober, yeah. Yeah, which was the first. I, I would say that those two music videos were the ones that influenced me to get into trying to get to professional stop motion oh wow okay those were the two that that made the, like i was influenced by gumby early on yeah but those two specifically because i was really getting heavy into music at that time period i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna make music and i'm gonna make music videos that have stop motion in them. and that was my goal that was gonna be my career i'm gonna be a musician that makes stop motion music videos rad <laughs> yeah it's a, of course at that time we didn't have youtube and internet even you know and so Learning all that shit was really difficult, and, and, and part of the whole process is just a beast, you know, like a Bolex or oh, whatever yeah. you're using, you know. it's Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. All the gear, gear was primitive, obviously. Right. You know, you're dealing with film and all the things that go along with that. And, uh, yeah, and the rigs, and no, there wasn't as much organization or anything like that. It was kind of just kind of wild, you know. So like give, me some Fred's, garage. give me some Fred stories. Oh my God, Fred! Yeah, those those guys were crazy. You know, you go there to the studio, and uh, he would be like, you know, pass the screw gun, and he would expect you to throw it. He he would oh, really, really expect you to throw equipment around. So I was always the voice of reason around there, and I was always like, Hey, you guys, you know, we got to slow down a little bit. Let's uh, let's be careful. This you were the bummer. Safe. Yeah, I was like that guy. <laughs> you know, which is like most people would think I'm. You know. The, the exact opposite. Usually, I'm the the rowdy one. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But it, it was fun, and Freddie was very creative, and, you know, he, he was a wild man, you know, in some ways, and he always had his own own way of getting into it. It was always, sometimes hard to get him to start animating, really? you know, and he might he might uh, procrastinate a little bit, you know, but then when he would, like, jump into it, he, would, he was pretty dialed up, and he could move the puppets so well, oh, and, that's cool. you, you know, and uh, so it was always a challenge working out there, but we, we had a lot of fun. That's you know? great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and you met Joe Russo through him, or? Uh, no, I'd known Joe. Uh, we had PA'd together on the music oh, okay. videos and stuff. So there was a, uh, 
Eyeballs Productions, and we did shoots at the brewery, which is now cool. a big fancy art community. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, we did. Uh, he w- worked with uh, Green Jello and stuff. So mm-hmm. we there was a long form video that we worked on there uh, together. Are you talking about Serial Killer? Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? I remember that. I own that. I own that VHS back in the day. Oh my God! Yeah. 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 So I helped him out kind of getting their lighting and stuff together, but it, I didn't really commit to the whole project because I had other work that paid and stuff at that yeah. time. Well, they, that project seemed like it was a passion project because it was like really uh, it was low quality puppets. Yeah. You know, and it was just done in somebody's back garage or yard or something it felt like, you know? Well, yeah, that again was Fred, you know, yeah. for sure. The the actual stop motion, the three little pigs. Three video. little pigs, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was Fred doing that in his dad's garage, you know, some rig he and somebody had built from Art Center, which now I actually have. You oh, know? Wow. oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that thing. <laughs> Pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, but the serial killer video uh, was more of a long form. And I think Bill Manspeaker somehow he was the singer for Green mm-hmm. Jello, and somehow he got a uh, uh, like a beta cam or something. Mm-hmm. And you know, by the time they were done with it, the thing was held together with gaffer's tape, and oh, you know, wow. they had just Beat destroyed everything. Yeah, uh-huh. because it was just there was such a party atmosphere, yeah. and they had that loft on Hollywood Boulevard um up you know where i guess green jello had practiced and then later uh that's where we were doing the tool prison sex video Mm. which also you know we experienced the earthquake while we were there and that was pretty crazy too you know yeah yeah (laughs) that all that one place talk about set shifts yeah (laughs) well everything i had a lens in my hand and i was like running around like where do i even set this down and wow yeah we felt like we needed to get out of the building but but then we couldn't because the gate at the bottom of the stairwell had become pinned with all the movement, it was oh, really the wow. shaking was really hard right in that area on Hollywood Boulevard. It was like Hollywood and, and Wilton right there. Oh, wow, wow, crazy! It was a really crazy night. I vowed I was going to leave L.A. right then. I was like, I'm not going to live here. Mm-hmm. This is no, not for me. And in still, the, I do. Uh, Mid '90s, they had Green Jello had a um, or Green Jelly because they had changed your name. Yeah, but Bill uh, Cosby. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, made him do that. Screw that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, they uh, what do you call it? They they went and. Um, got another space and was it on hollywood boulevard that was sunset? on sunset yeah sunset, sunset, yeah. sunset at like bronson i used to drive by all the time see the painting on there and I was they like, had those characters yeah. painted on like, the dude outside. i'm gonna go there and hang out with those guys never happened but yeah, yeah well i used to have my equipment there and i mm. worked on that stage a good bit too we would do different shoots and yeah. motion a lot of motion control shoots and shoots with joe russo and two sure. 3d films aaron sure. white yeah. Yeah. So Joe owns Starburns now. Joe Russo owns Starburns. One of the owners, not the only person. Dan Harm, Dan Harmon, uh, and James, James Bino, uh, Stamopoulos, Dino Stamatopoulos. Yeah. yeah. And I think they just made Duke, Duke Johnson an executive producer over there. Uh huh. Or maybe part owner. I'm not sure yet. Um, have to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> Find out. I, it's been yeah, a while. The power struggle over yeah, there. Yeah. 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 A lot of a lot of cooks in the kitchen apparently. Yeah. So, but they're doing good. They're doing fine over there. It's yeah, cool. good. No, yeah. I, I'm glad that they are and that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly happy for, for those guys getting yeah. in that studio together like that. Have You You haven't been to Stupid Buddy Studios yet? I have never visited over there. Okay. I heard those guys speak at, at Gumby Fest. I'll try, to introduce, pretty you. Interesting. I'll try to introduce you to some people so you can go over there and, and check it out. They're really nice guys. Yeah. So uh, That's where they do robot chicken. Robot chicken, yeah. yeah. Um, was it Seth? Well, Seth Green. Once he learns your name, he'll never forget it. That's uh, one of the cool things about Seth. Oh, like, nice. Well, at okay. least if he if he's hung out with you more than once, he'll be like, "Oh, hey, what's up?" You know. Uh, Matt's really nice. John and Eric are both very nice. So it's it's really accepting and really open people to, to kind of meet and, and talk to you. We should go over there. I think uh, Tom Shepard is is but, directing. But over you know there. Helder's son, though, right? I've I've never met Helder. We have some friends oh, okay. in common. Uh, oh, that's somebody you should talk to and hang out with. Yeah, yeah I'm Helder's sure I'd like, over there. like yeah. to meet him. Yeah, and Tom right. Shepard, I think, uh, maybe he's directing a bunch of those robot chickens right now. Mm. He was a director on a children's show, Annoying Orange, that right. I that I was uh, shooting for a couple years for Cartoon Network. So were, I have a lot of excuses to go and visit those guys. Now, were you doing the practical shooting, like lighting and stuff? I mean, how did that work with well, the with the annoying orange? That's right. Well, the the show was you know seventy uh, percent graphics or right, CG right. or computer, uh, but we, after we had effects a, actually. They, from my understanding, they, it was yeah. a lot of after effects, yeah. and it, it's uh, they comp those eyeballs and mouths onto the fruit. Hilarious, and stuff. yeah. So, but we also had a. Uh, a famous YouTuber, uh, Toby Turner. Right. And so it was, I guess, mostly my job to come to, to shoot him, you know, and make sure we got him shot, you know, in a proper 
Gotcha. Way so that and a lot of that was green screen, but we did have some practical sets and stuff. So it was fairly complicated, but not too bad, you know. And but it was a lot of green screen, and it was also my job to to give all the photographic or as many photographic elements as I could to post, so sure. that they could use that to comp scenes and stuff. We had miniatures, and I'd give them all kinds of angles and stuff. So yeah. gave them all the the plates and and stills. Of, elements and stuff that that they needed so it was a full-time job there for yeah. for a few weeks it's interesting there's a lot of stop motion people that were actually or post people i should say not necessarily stop motion people but post stop motion people or even puppet people that actually worked on annoying orange that's right and you, you run into these people and you're like hey what are you working on annoying orange you go there's no puppets in that <laughs> yeah what are, you, what are you talking about there's well, no stop motion in that what's going on well we did have a lot of miniature sets and things like that and uh and the and the oranges were you know puppet or miniature size so for me, it was very natural to like shoot scenes that that went with that, so that uh, you, you know, because it was the same as shooting, you know, stop motion or something. So the orange was that size, you know what I mean. So I could make decisions like based on how I would, might shoot like a stop motion. It would be integrating stop motion into live action or something like that. So I was able oh, to kind cool. of use my live action experience and my stop motion experience to sort of like do this new thing that this whole new crowd of people were into, you know, the YouTube crowd, which is such a phenomenon, you know? It, you know what's weird about that orange is it's really annoying. It is. <laughs> it is. It's really fucking annoying. Excuse my language. Sorry. I'm going to have to bleep myself. <laughs> podcast. But it's really annoying. It's, it, it, it's one of those things where you go, wow, really? Am I? Am it's I, hard to watch those episodes as an that? adult, but it's a different demographic. Oh, you know, yeah, you yeah. Know? It's for kids. It's definitely for <laughs> definitely. kids. Yeah. The it's marshmallow like, was always funny, though. He always had something funny to say. And the orange was really, you know, could be funny, and Toby was great oh, yeah. as well. well uh-huh. I'm not saying it wasn't funny. I'm just saying <laughs> it's you, annoying. You can't sit there and, and what is it? Binge watch that for like eight hours because then you start laughing like that orange, and you're going, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh god, please kill me. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you work in this field. After a while, you start watching the stuff that you worked on. You go, I can't do it. I can't do it. You That's know? right. I can't watch The Simpsons. Oh yeah, you worked on The Simpsons, didn't you? Simpsons. Yeah, I can't, work, I can't watch The Simpsons, Futurama. I can watch some Futurama. I take that back because I only did like maybe a year on Futurama. But um, I can watch some of it. But Simpsons, I can't do it. Can't. Yeah, yeah, Dude, it just kills me. <laughs> just to hear those voices is like nails on a chalkboard. Oh man! So, well, I, I love the show. I love that those characters. I love that show. It's just uh, I just can't. I hear you. Yeah. I, I I know how you could burn out on something yeah. like Same that. Same thing with I Robot understand. Chicken. I can't do Robot Chicken either. Right. It's one, it's like <laughs> what am I watching? I love the, I love Robot Chicken. I love the I I like making puppets that are like them. But uh-huh. It's just it's one of those things. It's, it's Kill me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. if we were, you know, uh, you know, eighteen or fifteen again. Yeah. Or you grow out of that stuff. You yeah. want you want more mature taste. You yeah, know? I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still like Beavis and Butthead, though. You know, I could watch Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> That's what I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. So, what do you what do you like in the industry? What do you like to to work on? Oh well, you know, lately I've been like. I, you know, it's all over the map with me. And it's well, you like, have a space. I have the space downtown that yeah. I've had for many years. Absolutely. Right. He has a warehouse if anybody's interested in renting a warehouse for shooting. That's right. Live action. It's Willow Street downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a nice, big, empty, uh, big, wide open space. What do you call the business? What's the business called? Rocket Films? Uh, Rocket or? Films is, it, that's really more for, was more my stop motion company. It mm-hmm. involved like the motion control. I have the motion control equipment. And, and so that was more as my DBA. So I call the Willow Street thing just 1333 Willow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, you know, people just that are interested in just using it as a location don't have to get confused that that might be a production company there already. Right, or something. right, exactly. You know, they need to think it's empty and. It's gorgeous space. To, well, thank you. Yeah, we're getting all kinds of work down there. I mean, we have USA Network on Tuesday. They're landing a helicopter. They're closing the whole street. And, mm. you know, yeah, so, you know, yeah. Castle was out back yesterday uh, or in the day before. There's some short film shooting there last night. You know, so it's always busy around there. Magnus Walker has a loft and it butts up to Willow Studios. So we just, there's this all this. Uh, incidental business that that comes from there you know because also palmetto is another popular street which is one street over and mm. so my studio kind of connects willow to palmetto so we're just oh, getting nice. all kinds of like filming and now that they're getting ready to close the bridge and that area are they just coming tearing that up. bridge down they're going to tear down that the sixth like street such bridge a shame I- Get over that. Well, the bridge is the bridge is falling apart. Of course, it's deteriorating. It is. Yeah, and the concrete yeah. has the cancer or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And but they well, are the going to steel build. is rotting inside of it probably as well. Right? The rebarb is yeah. probably gone. Yeah, the, it's probably 
permeating the water's probably going through yeah. it and, and rusting out the rebar and stuff like that so but they're gonna they're gonna build a, a really nice new and i've seen the plans it's very beautiful oh, the cool. contractors took the building across the street they're nice guys and they're cool. already tearing down buildings left and wow. right down there yeah the whole place was shaking friday because oh, of really? the, the big uh Backo well, cloth how do you thing. film with all that noise? Well, it's always a lot of noise and stuff down oh, there, okay, so you it. just get used to Stop it. Stop motion, it doesn't matter. That's but right. Live action with dialogue, you got to do ADR after that, you know? It's like, oh. Well, the sound men are pretty good. Okay. And, and people, <laughs> the, the neighborhood has come to really uh, respect the filming and stuff. So if, mm. everybody knows if you're calling, if they can hear you call, roll camera, it's like time to be quiet. You it's know, a, it's a beautiful neighborhood. I. I w oh shit! That's a big spider. Oh my god! Woo! <laughs> I, I had a huge bit. spider laying on me. Uh, careful! <laughs> no, no, no. He, he was he was more like a daddy long legs, but he was like crawling down my arm. I saw him earlier. I don't I don't like to kill sp specific spiders because they. I just got a spider land on me. If not, everybody's wondering what's going on. <laughs> um, I don't like to kill specific spiders because they eat all the bad spiders or they eat all the bad bugs. So anything that can catch a mosquito or kill a black widow, I'm I'm you want to leave for. that going, yeah. Yeah, and there's these little jumping spiders that are <laughs> they're amazingly cute little beasts, and uh, and they're friendly. It sounds weird, but they're actually really friendly. Uh huh. And they'll crawl right up to you and and just want to say hi. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. And I've never been bitten by one. Uh, knock on wood. Yeah. And then, uh, but they they will hunt the other bad spiders in the neighborhood. So. I keep them around. They're fine. But that scared the hell out of yeah, me. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what the? Anyway, so uh, oh, what were we talking about? We were talking about the um, your space and the... Uh, oh, the area down there. The area down there is, is just... I never thought I would say this about downtown LA, but it's actually kind of nice. It's booming. It's, it's changed a lot. I've been there over 15 years, and it has... I mean, it has changed so much. There's nice coffee shops. There's nice vegan restaurants. Right. Yoga place. You know, it's you like, turn a what corner is going on? There and there's something amazing. Exercising in the streets. And it really literally used to be like, how is this guy going to try to rip me off? Or like, right. this guy, you know, just bums and, you know... Bums and Skid Row. Skid Row. Oh. It was, yeah. And which was great because it was cheap back in the day. And that yeah. was a nice place for me to throw all my equipment and not have to worry like so much about it. I could go work on other jobs and stuff and my equipment would be fine if I needed to use the motion control or do a stop motion job or an effects shot. Well, the place was there and you just open, you know, and there was space. It's like a big open studio, yeah, you know? So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. There, there's a lot of graffiti down there. It's really nice as well. It's, it's interesting. You can't legally have murals in LA now because uh, it's not Villaraigosa. One of the guys before Villaraigosa got rid of him. Oh, huh. He made okay. the law you can't have uh, on your on your property a uh, a mural, so huh. to speak. I didn't know about that. Yeah, so they they made it so that you couldn't put murals up. So then the graffiti artist went and said, hey, let me just tag your wall real quick. And then they just started doing whole walls, and they kind of bypassed that law. Yeah. And the owner goes, I didn't hire them to do that. Right, so, you know, right. So there's beautiful art down there. It's really kind of it's really cool. Uh, yeah, and, and, and with that, nowadays, with you know, with the uh, smartphones, you've always got people like taking selfies and doing po posing. And so we get just every Saturday and Sunday, there's just parades of people. You Mostly know. pretty women posing. A lot, in front a lot of, of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And they're all posing and getting their picture taken. But the, fu the funny thing is that they, they put their foot on the wall every time. And so all that nice art we were talking about, yeah. the nice graffiti art, there's just a line of footprints, you know, all along the, the base right of at, it. Yeah. Right about two feet high, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and those are like selfie footprints, you know, yeah. whatever you want to, I don't know what we should what call I, that. I was but. telling you when I came down there that there was just like every block there was a girl posing with a camera, you know, somebody had a camera, professional photographer taking pictures of, of, of pretty girls down there it, all dressed up. And it's all day long, every weird. day, you know, or mostly the weekends, especially people just come park their car and then they start, Taking yeah. pictures and walking around and yeah, they'll huh. do music video shoots and photo shoots will just break out in front of in front of my building all the time and all of them down there I would wow. say you know, and I think it's because you know my building is like one of the oldest on the street. It's 1923. It was Morel Meats. Wow. Uh, so it was a meat packing company. Absolutely. They had a, there was railroad tracks in the back, so I'm sure yeah, it I came saw that off yeah. the rails and got loaded into the you know trucks and stuff. Yeah. And, some of the other business around businesses around there were like truck parts companies mm -hmm. and stuff. So I think it was all like meat and trucking and train yeah, bringing yeah, the meat yeah. in. And then later, I think they were probably doing some of the butchering and stuff next door. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So there's a stream of blood going down the street. Oh yeah. And now it's vegans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now it's vegan. A stream yeah. of tofu going down yeah. the street. Yeah. I always think it's funny when my place fills up with extras or something, and it's like, yeah. 
this was a meat pack. <laughs> time, and now you guys are being herded just like cattle too. Nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, here, sit here, eat this, read this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, you're doing that. Do you have any um, any plans to do anything in the future for stop motion or filming besides? Well, yeah, I've got a you know definitely got a horror movie coming up, and I think there's going to be some some stop motion aspects of that. So cool. I love like incorporating stop you know stop motion yeah. into live action or into you know effect sequences and things like that. So, and you know I'm also thinking I'll probably start pursuing commercials a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. I have some really great contacts who are just producing mad amounts of commercials right now for big big agencies going all over the world and stuff so i think i might try to step into that game a little bit and that would be another area where to bring you know some effects work and stop motion work in but you know i'm just like a a cameraman and i feel like stop motion is just a major color in my palette you know and so and being in the union for that and everything make you know i like to think of myself as capable of shooting you know whatever you know it's great that you have that history too well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what productions have you worked on besides the, of course, the Fredster and the um, uh, the other one that we talked about, the Community? Uh, oh, you worked yeah, on I community did work on Community. Yeah, Starburns. Starburns. Yeah, yeah, that was a great experience. That was you like did the Little Caesars commercials. The Little Caesar commercial we yeah. did at, with uh, Drew afterwards. Drew Hodges. Drew Hodges. Yeah, uh, that was pretty cool too. Did that he was... direct that or he animated that? He animated it. Okay. Uh, Drew I Hodges guess... is the executive producer director of uh, Tumbleleaf. Yes, so, which amazing. I work on right now. Oh yeah, yeah. You're, that's right. You're I'm show. working on that right now. Yeah, and Drew's an amazing animator. He really had to like really. That was a hard deal. The way that that the shot was directed, it just it, so many challenges and mm. stuff that we built like a pretty crazy motion control rig on. You know, I ended up putting like a long run of speed rail to, and building a custom camera mm. head just to make this shot of this skateboarder that had been fabricated out of dollar bills so the, and the whole set was built like out of dollar bills and yeah. there's a skateboarder going down the being tracked with the camera and so yeah it was a pretty big and long move it took drew quite a few days and i know he was frustrated but he really knocked it out of the park it was really beautiful the work yeah. that, that he did on that and uh and, and yeah it was a pretty big setup for uh for uh you know hmm. one camera job yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. And then coming from the community that we had just finished, uh, which was like a 10 camera job, you know, and that, mm. that was cool. But the studio just wasn't really outfitted with anything. When I got there, they didn't even have power worked out transformers. So I had to work out getting the transformers together and all that all, you know, while I'm really still just trying to be the DP and then the way they structured the crews and stuff over there, they just, the, it wasn't the way I would have like built my own well, they didn't crew. know what they were doing at that point. They just opened the studio, and not even open. The studio wasn't it, even open yet. Exactly, it and was that, just an open space the, warehouse with some duvetine thrown up. And, and well, we threw the duvetine. You out. guys believe threw the duvetine. You know? Yeah, believe it. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. You know, it started really making was. his animation bays. Yeah, but it, but it, it was cool. I mean, I like that we made the challenge. You know, some of the people hadn't had so much experience in, in mm-hmm. stop motion and stuff before, but we hit a schedule and we all kind of like put our heads down and got it That's done, cool. and it, it was fun. Community yeah. special was fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. And I was proud of how, you know, where we got with it and stuff. And it looked, you know, while I would not have liked to have put a little more time into color correction and a little mm-hmm. bit more time into lighting and stuff, I thought the camera movement went well. And I thought that the framing and everything was pretty pretty good. And the reception on, you know, was pretty good. Everyone seemed to like it. Nice. I saw it. So. Yeah, it was, it was a big deal. I remember uh, I didn't get to go down during that shooting, but I did get to go down during the um after actually the uh dollar bill shot oh the, yeah little the, caesars right little yeah. caesars but yeah. um i saw some of the stuff that was set up but it was it was one of those things where everybody was talking about the community production that's in stop motion the underground stop motion underground in la and we're all talking about it and you sit there and go man i want to go see this and like you can't go it's a closed set you're not invited you know that kind of thing we oh, can't yeah. invite you <laughs> like, we want to invite you but we can't invite you it was oh, a weird it was a, well, it was a it was a <laughs> weird time because it was all very top secret i suppose yeah it was very top secret it was okay. like oh community yeah we can't talk about this and it was it's funny because i've worked in a lot of these productions and, and Loose lips supposedly sink ships, but not in stop motion. It's like you want the loose lips. You want to have the communal, like, hey, what are you working on? Oh, well, what is it? What is this? What is it? And sometimes you get somebody that's like really secretive and you go, dude, you're in your NDA, your non disclosure agreement. 
I send the same thing, so you can talk to me about it. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't like, know what was so secret about it. It was going on national television. I you know. know what I mean? I, I don't it remember a, it being so much I of a secret. I think because it was their you know. first production. Maybe so, And they yeah. were just trying to be really protective of it. There were so. some growing pains there yeah. for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Shadow had a similar thing going on as well with Helen Back, like when Helen Back got started, because Helen Back's in theaters right now. It just it's like three, four years to make that film, right? Okay. When it first got started. You, you, no one could talk about it. They uh, couldn't tell you the t- name of the show. <laughs> they couldn't tell you if it was stop motion or not. They couldn't. They couldn't say a word. Wow. Who the actors are? Nothing. There was a there was a gag order on everybody. Wow. Yeah. That's... Was, and then two years in, when they were getting behind, they're like, "All right, we need more people. This is what we're doing." <laughs> right. <laughs> you know right. I mean? so. I, yeah. I don't know why you would want to keep something like that secret. It seems yeah. like you need to promote it. You need to go the other direction yeah. and tell people and get the word out. That, yeah. Stop well, motion is one of those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, well, um, so you did those. Did you do anything in the 90s besides the green jello? Oh, well, y- let's see. In the 90s, mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty crazy because after we did the prison sex video, mm-hmm. it got pretty, you know, that and the the sober video, which I didn't work on so much. Uh, I did some some work on that. But uh, that one and prison sex had gotten into, like, heavy rotation on MTV yeah, and were getting time. played in Europe and stuff. So people yeah. really, you know. I think about the DV or the CD like three times. I wore it out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all good stuff. I mean, I enjoyed it. I wore out those those records and stuff too. Yeah. And and you know, uh, you know, after that, so Fred got a line, a string of jobs. That that was pretty good. We ended up doing a Sepultura uh, video oh, for right. a song Rada Mahata, and I like that pretty oh, well. Man. It was one of my favorite pieces of all time. It had been. Um, we did it with both 35 and 16. Oh, wow. <clears throat> you know, so that was a bit of a challenge, but it was cool because, you know, with the 16, we had the Bolex with the 10 millimeter, and you could shove it right in there mm-hmm. and get, like, nice shots of the puppets that were close up. And you get your nicer, like, a little bit further back stuff with the 35 and mm-hmm. stuff. So it was interesting mixing those two mediums. I don't know if I'd try it again, but <laughs> 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 but we still had a great time doing that. And I, I thought that that looked, you know was one of my it's one of my favorite pieces freddie really had his heart in it and we were up against a deadline i think we shot i only shot 30 days on it you know Mm. something but that was that was a lot for us back then and uh what else did we do we did something for like danzig that went pretty well there was one that i really like that that was a black and white one that i did with lynn burge and um another guy kevin willis and um also, Mick Oshwalski, who was like Fred's right-hand man. Mm. And uh, we did that in really poor circumstances, but we used one of David Allen's old cameras. It was like a, what was it? It was um, a Cunningham camera, and those had been in World War One actually. Mm-hmm. And the, it was like a shoulder handheld camera, 35-millimeter camera that the, you know, the... I guess the news guys were carrying around over in World War One, and they kept getting shot with the things. So they wow. stopped, you know, because they looked like some kind of weapon. Oh wow! They were, so they were getting mistaken for people with weapons. What was the camera? They, it was a Cunningham. I don't know those. Yeah, really. I, there were really a short run of them because the, of this. The I eclairs think. look like weapons, right? You know, <laughs> well, this is before that. I mean, this is wow. in the, this is like probably. I mean, that must have been. Now we're looking at a camera that's probably ninety years old. Is what the body of that thing was, right. and it had wow. a. A PV mount, a Panavision mount. Okay. Somehow, uh, David Allen had a Panavision zoom on there. It was oh. a really beautiful rig, but it was really strange because you had to look through one hole to focus, and you look through another hole to frame. It was two, so it was like that's this, weird. Yeah, and then the controller for to turn it over was like. It kind of looked like a Cooper System jog box or something. It was like that red and just those red LED sort mm-hmm. of calculator looking thing. And, you you know, programming, there was like a piece of paper with the instructions of what, how to set the exposure times and stuff. Whoa, you know? whoa. Yeah. And, it, and so the camera was really pretty big. So any kind of movement, we ended up having to move. Like we would move sets in front of it rather than move the camera. We would move things in front of it. And yeah. But really, it was black and white and I really focused on the lighting and it, it took us a long time to do it, but I'm really proud of that piece. It was for a rhino bucket, but we later, you know, just repurposed it and took their music and put some other music on it and called it like Father of Time, you know. Uh-huh. It's like these guys, these puppets get stuck in a clock kind of thing. Nice. And, they can't, and they can't stop time. I wonder where that stop thing time. is. Uh, well, I, I tried to contact the record company. It was Moonstone Records. They uh-huh. were out of full moon. They're probably gone now. They're gone. And, yeah. and I, I contacted the band, and it's gone. So really, I have like the, the masters, basically. Now the film is gone and stuff. But the masters, I guess, would be the three-quarter-inch copy of it that I have. Oh, wow. So you have to like 
digitize that and yeah i've got it digitized and stuff and oh okay yeah so you I'll can show, show me in sometime. secret nice yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah it's not it's not cool. a secret uh it's no a, no i mean you scene. can't put it on internet uh i probably could at this point oh, i think okay. we're basically the owners of it by oh, now got it. you know yeah. um but it, it was cool I, we had a lot of fun doing that i mean it was so hot in the room we were working that like the hot glue was melting and stuff because we were wow upstairs from like the foam room at uh mark rapaport shop the creature effect mm-hmm, shop that mm-hmm. was part of full moon you know oh, but, wow. so we had like they said oh you guys can work up here and it was like in an attic in glendale in the whoa, summer so whoa. it was so hot no air you know yeah and we were burning all these lights and oh, stuff you man know? it may st- didn't burn the building down yeah the bulbs kept burning out i was changing bulbs every five minutes you know <laughs> and, oh. but i still love that piece you know nice nice did you do the uh was it motor freaks or motor junkies or whatever that oh fred motor moto creeps or whatever moto you creeps, know i yeah. didn't work on that that was fred and yeah. nick and i'm not sure who else fred didn't always use a dp and uh, sometimes he used other dps it was that was his la- last thing he did before he passed away okay I yeah i believe and uh it could be it never yeah. got finished Huh. You know? um, there's a cut of it online that I saw uh, a while back. I don't know who cut it. Maybe his son cut it or something. Maybe Mick, uh, Mick yeah. Oshwowski. Yeah. Mick yeah. was actually came down and he'd had a studio in Sun Valley for a while. Mm. It was just a small, like, uh, you know, small place. And he had kept a lot of things out of Fred's studio. And he, when he decided to give it up, it's when he came around with the... Uh, Hmm. with the crane and he it hadn't been operated in so long it's this gantry system yeah. that we re- used to hold the bolex on and we also put a i had modified it to put an air sr2 on there hmm. Hmm. and uh so he he came and uh he just said let's just keep this here now it doesn't make sense to try to give it to fred's son he won't know what to do with it and right and it literally it sat in my it sat for the longest in my place and then i used the head that on a couple of jobs and then but more recently, I actually decided, oh, let's overhaul this thing and hang it and let's test it all out. And we got it up and running again. Yeah, I didn't I really shoot anything, yeah. but we definitely got it hung from span sets and mm-hmm. I-beams from mm-hmm. the ceiling. And so in my studio now, we could literally put that anywhere. And then you just hook the air compressor up to it that you know ran the brake system. Yeah. It was a wild system. It made all this crazy noise. And, oh, wow. You know, That's yeah. cr- who engineered that? Yeah. I think Fred and maybe another fellow from the art center mm. uh, that had been maybe Mad teaching. scientists. Yeah, seriously. Those guys had, I think a lot of, there was a electronics, a surplus electronics store in Pasadena called, uh, God, what was it called? C, uh, I want to say it was CNS, mm-hmm. CNS Electronics, but it might have had a little bit different name. It's been closed so many years, I just don't even remember. We would go in there and get motors, and, and it was all stuff that was you know probably from JPL or mm-hmm. Lockheed Martin and stuff, so yeah. surplus electronics. So yeah. we would go in there and find all kinds of rigs to help us move the camera or connect to the motion control or you know sur- surplus stepper motors which was all we could afford mm-hmm. you know because we had the motion control that's kind of cool surplus stepper motors oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah i know i think i ever bought a brand new stepper motor until mm-hmm. more recently in my life <laughs> isn't it strange it used to be able to like just go down the street go to an uh, electronic store and buy whatever you needed uh, absolutely now you have to go online and order this stuff we're lucky in la there's a lot of places we can still go yes but it's not like you it used to be used to go to the radio shack and be able to buy transistors and resistors exactly and led lights LED and stuff lights. like that they barely have anything in there nowadays it's like one little aisle and it's, <laughs> it's like one type of led we can go to fries yeah fries. but even fries doesn't really carry stepper motors and stuff uh, no like that. you know no. what i mean they carry leds you could maybe you know. find some steppers at apex electronics still um i there's, there's an electronics store right down the street here on washington actually uh oh marvac yeah Marvac. Yeah, they've been yeah, great yeah, i'm yeah. glad to hear they're still here yeah yeah. They were all, yeah i bought stuff from them well in the distant past it's just insane though you i know? hope the electronics stores stay around because there's something about going in an electronics store on saturday mm-hmm. morning you know oh yeah well i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make a uh it's a laser cutter Oh, so it's actually it's three things. It's a laser cutter, 3D printer and um, a CNC router. Oh, man. And it's modular and it has X, Y and Z access. So which is insane, right? What? Yeah. What are you going to do with all that? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I need to experiment. A, okay. I, I, you know, actually, what I want to do is I, I'm, I'm going to use it to do some cutout animation. So I want to do some white paper animation. OK. And it's a very low LED burn. So the it won't it won't actually leave a brown mark on the edge of the oh, paper. Oh, cool! So just uh, it cuts and really I, clean. Yeah, really clean. And I have a um, I have a what's it called a cricket cutter or a cry cut, whatever they call it, and it's a paper one. But you have to stick it to this adhesive plastic. Okay. And stick it through this routing machine. It looks like a looks like a regular printer, 
You stick, and it will cut out the forms. Problem is when you peel off the paper, it warps the paper, so the paper like kind of caves in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you will never be f- permanently flat ever again. Hmm. So well, you use the glass to hold it down. The, you know. Yeah, you but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even, yeah, yeah, you know, because I'm going to be doing multiple planes, and that, oh, yeah, that yeah, require yeah. a lot of glass. Multiple, yeah. A lot of glass. I mean, I don't Walt mind Disney. a little crinkle here, a little crinkle there, but really, I could I can cut foam core with it. I can cut cardboard with it. Oh, that'll I can work. Cut everything. So yeah. it makes better sense to do it that way. Plus, it's an exact cut instead of me using an exacto. I can. Yeah. You know. Well, and you don't have to sit there and take the time to do that. And it's fast. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing too is I can make a 3D printer that's four feet by four feet. Can you uh, imagine? That's that'd be really nice. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think I would have enough material to actually make something that big uh-huh. you know, the, and it would take <laughs> probably a month to print anything at the right. speeds that it, but it's possible um, right. i have a friend that actually uh, i haven't talked to him in years um but he was it was a co-worker and, and he was trying to uh create uh like a six foot by three foot 3d printer at one point oh my goodness engineering and stuff yeah so i worked with uh one that's, artist that's my neighbor by the uh, way is he yelling at <laughs> yeah. us? no 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 he's He's in his 90s. He's, he's, he's just breathing. Oh, <laughs> so, it's a yeah. hot day. Yeah, it's I can really understand. Hot day. It was 100 well, degrees out here. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, yeah, I had worked with a, an artist, uh, Paul McCarthy, and they do sculpture on such a, on a huge level. Oh. And I think they were using full blown CNC to cut like walnut and, and stuff mm. like that and taking these just giant sculptures and shipping them around the country and way, you know, huge weights where you need cranes and stuff to move mm-hmm. them around. Mm-hmm. So. There is there is life after the uh, the, the large uh, 3D printer. I yeah, suppose, right. You know? <laughs> I want I want ways to, to do it. I want to get the CNC and uh, and uh, be able to cut like big big chunks of uh, what is that? Almost like a, a, a what is it MDF? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, but I was looking into it. There's actually other things you can cut with the CNC. It's really cool, like foam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You use CNC to cut the uh, sculpting foam, and then. You just, you just clean it up, of course, and then you mold it and cast it, and it becomes this, you can make huge things out of that. Yeah. That's what they do with a. There's a plastics company down in uh, downtown LA that does that. Okay. Where they have rotocasters, and they'll 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 what they'll do is they'll make their 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 CNC will cut the form for them, and then they'll mold it. Right. And they'll rotocast it with plastics. Oh yeah. Okay. And it's wow. Just, I mean, it's a big process, but you can do it at home if you have the technology and the knowledge of how to do it. And nowadays, mm. like the the device I'm going to make is under five hundred dollars. Oh, that's incredible. I think the parts alone are like three hundred. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, of course, you have to. Yeah, there's another hidden cost in there somewhere, but it's nothing. It's really nominal. So I might actually be able to build it for about three hundred bucks. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, I love that do, do it yourself. Isn't that crazy? Way to go. So now you can do the camera movers doing the same technology. Oh, yeah. how's that? So you use uh, I think they're using Raspberry Pis. You know what Raspberry Pi is? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the little Raspberry logic Pi card. computers. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. then they use Arduino controllers. Yeah, connect the two, and then um, their Arduino will control. Or your Raspberry Pi will control um, all the motors, the stepper motors and stuff. Wow. And then you're using the bands. And because we're using uh, DSLRs for stop motion, you can make a whole camera rig right. just with that stuff. Sure. And and people that have taken advantage of that is like D- Ditto Gear, who makes the Omni Slider, which I have one of Oh, those. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is all basic, like, old school Arduino technology. Right. You know, it's, it's... But those smaller rigs for the DSLRs are so oh, ideal for brilliant. the new wave of, what, stop motion and everything. Yeah, and yeah. Hooking it up to Dragon, and they're all self-powered with their own drivers and stuff. Oh, yeah. You should, we should have Ian over here, and he could talk our ears off about that. Ian that I work with. Uh, yes. He, yeah, I met him briefly with yeah, you the other day. There's Chach, who we talked for a long time. Yeah, right? he was and great. Then Ian has the glasses. And yeah. Ian, Ian's from Portland, and, and Ian's our motion control guy over there at... Uh, at at Stupid Buddy Studio, not Stupid Buddy Studio, I'm getting my studios mixed up. Big Spix. Big Spix, yeah. And at Big Spix, uh, he does all the motion control stuff. And then Tony Dublin, who is one of the lighting guys there as well, he does all the uh, electronics. So the, the three of the four guys, three to four guys over there that build all this stuff, mad scientists as well. You walk in there and there's like a pallet like a wood pallet with all these things screwed down. Oh yeah, <laughs> all these electronics. Oh my god, that's their yeah, their their mother uh, the motherboard. motherboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just all over the place. There's a ton of it, and it's oh. it's just insane. You uh, you end up sitting there going, "What is going on here?" You know, and then and then yeah. you see their most control rig where they have it. It's like almost like a uh, I sh- I showed you the one. Where it's got all the axes, but it's almost like completely over top of the stage. Yeah, you know which I mean? is great because it's all up and out of the way, and you can get those flying shots. And oh, beautiful camera move! Yeah, but it's not like it's not like going and getting a, a 
uh, like a, a Volo was about thirty two thousand dollars. You know, okay. And Volo hooks directly up to Dragon. Use it on a Disney production. Nice. And it hooks right up to Dragon, and you get beautiful camera moves, and it's really simple and easy to move and and to work with. Otherwise, you're sitting there going, "What am I doing? This is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah." Like, uh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hot out here. I hope so. Yeah, here, let me check out. Hold on. I'm gonna pause this. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Good. And we're back. I uh, just had to check on my neighbor there. You know, being a good neighbor, make sure he's he's safe. When you're in your 90s, dude. And it's this hot. It's, oh, I gotta yeah. say, it's like 90 degrees right now. Oh yeah. Culver City. That's pretty it's gotta hot. be hotter than 90. 90. What does my phone it say like here? It might be. Yeah. Um. Well, the other day on Friday when you were over at the studio, it was um, it was 104. Oh, in Sun Valley. Oh Sun my Sun Valley. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's 97 right now. Yeah. There you go. What the. Yeah, no wonder <laughs> he's making noise like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to rain on Thursday. Yay. We need that. <laughs> oh, Ready man. for that. So how long have you lived in L.A.? Since uh, 1990. So what okay. is that? That's about 25 years. 25 years, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a little bit of a long time. I came when I was 20. I was I was pretty young. I got here when I was 22. Yeah. Or not 22, but 20 as well. 20 as well, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good place to be. It was like pretty far out for, you know, for me coming here. You know. were, you run, were you running away from the... Uh, you know, I was just coming to do some work. I had been through cool. five semesters of film school, and they mm. were kind of telling me I, that really I needed to slow down on the film classes and stuff and start getting back to the core stuff. But, so, you know, and then I got a job, you know, and when I started working for uh, Paul Flattery and then I decided to stay, you know, mm -hmm. because I learned so much working at that. You know, they were just producing music videos one after another. They were just line producing them. And and I was right in there. I was in the office of Xerox and Time Cards going, oh, this guy makes a lot of money, you know. Maybe I want to try that, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, oh, look exactly. at these dudes, you know. Or I don't want to go into our department. They're getting screwed, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, they are. It's hard. <laughs> you know, it's one. It, if you work in the industry, working in the art department is one of the most uh, – well, it can be one of the most rewarding, but it's also the one that you starve in. Yeah, for sure. They work. You know. They work the long hours. You know, they have mm -hmm. to be creative and they have to have a good attitude. Like and everybody all else. the money goes to the materials. It doesn't go to the artist. That's right. And you they make very little. Get on the, the guys back end. for yeah. dirt. Yeah, for dirt. Yeah, where the electricians that are working about the same you know as hard now they have some risk and stuff and they have to have there's more prerequisites for what they have to know but you know they were making four times as much you know or oh, three yeah. times as much well, easily the 80s compared to now you would make three to four times within the industry what we're making now oh yeah Especially considering that inflation has happened and stuff like that the whole industry has kind of taken a, a nosedive and then has bounced back but it's not bounced back in the same sense of making the same amount of money it's bounced back and it's alive but totally the, the the work has, I won't say it's thinned out, because there's a lot more work than there was 10 years ago. Well, you've got yeah. everybody, you know, everybody's a cameraman now. Everybody can yeah. do it themselves. Everybody's an editor. Everybody has these tools yeah. that we would have loved to have had when we were doing it, you know, yeah. 15 years ago. You know, they have, everybody has that on their desktop now. So, Well, we didn't have Pro Tools when I worked on The Simpsons. There so you go, yeah. That was a huge one. The, I remember the day that we got Digital Performer. We didn't have Pro Tools yet. We had Digital Performer, and it was like, which is an audio software for editing. And I was like, wow, this is nice. And then you were doing MIDI control. And then and then all of a sudden, it was like, all right, we're using Digital Performer. Let's start Pro Tools. And pop the Pro Tools in. It was like, oh, night and day. Yeah. You know, it was a huge well, job. It was like Avid did for uh, editing, I suppose. Nonlinear editing yeah. came along. and Yeah, Avid destroyed our customer service for Pro Tools, though. That was hard. I remember the machine. I believe that. This machine just kept crashing, and we had old Macs. They weren't oh, yeah. old at the time. They're brand new, spanking new Macs, but they were kept crashing on the Pro Tools, and Avid had just bought them. And, oh yeah. And we couldn't get couldn't any get service. through because everybody's already yeah got technical support well, needed for that stuff. It was they just molded so their technical support together, like their, their editing and their audio. Oh man, and it was hard to get through. <laughs> and then you had to pay for the service because it used to be free. It was like, oh yeah, the the trials and tribulations of being a foley artist. It was hard. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. And we used what's called a Synclavier or oh. Synclavier. You know what those are? No. So these big, giant computers. It looks like a supercomputer. Oh, my God. And it rolls on wheels, and it's got these big laser discs that you, you – cartridges <laughs> that you stick in the top. And it laser cuts into this disc, and that stores your image oh my of goodness. your audio. 
and then the computer will access it, big floppy drives or whatever. And so you're sitting there, and you're <laughs> Travis, who was the guy that, that did the Foley and sound design, he um, he had out of all the devices he could have possibly had to control this machine, he had a Nintendo keyboard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing The Simpsons on a Nintendo keyboard at the time. Oh, my and God. I, I don't know if it was because the other one broke and he needed a replacement right away or what, but it was it was hilarious. You go into this beautiful <laughs> space that he owned, and you walk in there, and you go, wow, look at all this stuff. Wow, great. What, what are you using to control all this? He goes, Nintendo keyboard. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it was good times. That's good. It was good times. So, um What's your favorite camera to work with? Oh, I don't... Because I know you have some at home. You probably oh, should sure. talk about that. Oh, well, I do have the uh, Mitchells, yeah. and maybe they are my favorite cameras, actually. They're really both really nice. The One of them is a Freeze Mitchell. It's a 35R, mm. which means it has a beam splitter instead of a uh, spinning mirror. Mm-hmm. It was a great camera for uh, animation. It had four-pin you know, registration and all that, but beyond that... I had taken it to uh, Bruce Wilton, who put a, uh, he was a mechanical concepts, he was a motion control builder guy, and he, he put a focus tray on there, f- on the freeze camera, and so I could control the, mo- the focus through a bellows system, and uh, also Doug Freeze put the, uh, put a uh, video tap on there for me as mm-hmm. well, and so it, that, that camera was beautiful, you know, I, I really enjoyed shooting with that, and uh, it's great 35 millimeter rig, and I have an older one. That sort of inspired that one, but it was there was no way to get a video tap on it, mm. which is so that was a Mitchell GC, also in a focus tray, built by uh, Bruce Wilton, and uh, and I, you know I, I didn't want to give up that focus tray, but I needed to get a video tap through mm-hmm. the lens video tap, you know, so that we could hook that up to the perception and the PVR, the PVR, the PAR, and for the toasters that were coming out, nice. or not, or the toaster, the lunchbox, lunchbox. I have yeah. one of those. It's sitting around here somewhere. There you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway. We used to use the, you know, the satellite camera for the, the that sort of thing, just a security <laughs> camera. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Nice. That's, that's, St- a, that's a newer one. Uh-huh. That's a nice piece of equipment. I got that for $50. Don't don't throw it away. <laughs> when you get back to shooting film, you're going to need that. Exactly. And uh, so love those cameras. One of them has a, a bipack rig mm-hmm. on it so you can backwind or also do like aerial, you take an aerial shot and put titles over it and stuff. Nice. And so... I, yeah, both those cameras are, are really nice. I'm very happy with them, and I will never throw them away. Yeah. I'm sure I'll get them rolling again soon with some film and stuff, That's cool. and do some experimental. It'd be great if you could just make your own film, like make it physically. Yeah, I don't know. Make that. it and then process it yourself. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time, but no, but it, it would mean, be great. <laughs> it's it. You can't do that with it. it. You know, any of this technology. It's like you need to buy. Yeah. The material. You, ha- you can't just build it. No. You know, I had God a thing I could cameras, maybe process the film. I had right. like a, a funky little thing, but I I never did it. You could process the film. That's true. You, yeah. But you can't you can't reproduce you can't make it. Physically. No, I don't I don't have And so have when no that stops, that. can you imagine? That just stops. It's dead. It's gone. Yeah. There's only a handful of places that do it. That's I hope that day doesn't come. I know they saved it once already. They were like, it's hey, too bad you, you can't just have China just make it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, have the Chinese just make it, and we'll pay the premium for it. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure it's expensive now. I'm sure they're doing it. Honestly, uh, probably. Yeah, they're probably manufacturing it, sending it to us, and then we're just adding one little coat to it, and then uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> gosh, technology. Yeah. Well, the good thing is the digitals it exists. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, Dragon and the DSLRs mm. and the animators, it gives them so much more freedom and stuff, right. and to see what they're doing and. They can be way more in control. I mean, I used to have to be like there with the animator, and if they wanted to see playback, that would be me going back and, right, and right. then restarting everything. Right. And Personally, I want to do it. Whoa. Gosh, man, this is a wild day today. It's a little crazy. Sunday in Culver City. Yeah. Wow. The um, heat getting to people. <laughs> we're all losing our minds. Um, I, I personally want to do a, a black and white, old school maybe a noir style oh yeah stop motion thing it might even integrate live action into it i mean it just that's be beautiful something fun you and i should team up on something like that i'll help you with that yeah do the fundraiser and start, so we can have some money to be able to play with but, that would be great but yeah it's, it's, count me in i always wanted to do like a black and white like noir type of thing you know old school yeah you well know. you'll have to look at that uh that one piece the father of time the it will yeah you'll like yeah. that it's all black and white and it's it's pretty epic it have you real... seen the screen novelties guys their first stop motion thing that they did as a team 
It's a black and white. I forget what it's called, but it's it's kind of like a tribute to Ray Harryhausen. Oh man, it's got some oh. monsters and stuff in it. It's cool. Oh, I'd love to see that. It's really cool. Yeah, there's um, man, there's there's just the lack of that. Uh, what do you call that? That aesthetic, that that taste nowadays is gone. Yeah, that people don't of, do that. I li- and I really am way more inspired by that kind of stuff than what I'm seeing nowadays. I mean, I love everything and I love all the perfect stop motion that right, we're getting right. and. But man, I miss the clunky monsters and the skeletons and mm-hmm. the scary mm-hmm. looking, you know, Harryhausen and right. or even like David Allen and Prime Evils, what right. he was trying to do there. Well, it was dirty. Sort of yeah, it looked dirty. Yeah, and it was great. It was scary, scary, you know. Scary and yeah, the way that it moved and the way that it was so yeah, it was otherworldly and yeah. and and that also I think you know the thirty five lenses and the and the larger puppets and stuff mm-hmm. lended to that too. I think Harryhausen used a little bit larger scale mm-hmm. than. What we're seeing. Well, his modern. studio used to be down the street from here. Okay. And he actually used to live less than a mile from here. Ah. I was born, or not born, but I should say uh, as a kid, his house is actually over the hill. Oh, wow. Over multiple hills, I should say, Inglewood. Okay. But I've seen his house where he grew okay. up. And they still have, I don't know if it's a, as of today, but like four or five years ago, they still had his uh, back house that his dad built for him for animation where he did some movies and stuff in. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think he did a. Uh, um, Oh, I can't even remember. I, I would have to look at the book to remember what it was, but I know that he shot out here in Culver City in one of the um, one of the buildings locally. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we, we're right next door to Sony Studios here. That yes. they did King Kong over here when it was RKO. Uh huh. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm in historical stop motion. Oh yeah. Heaven right MGM, now. MGM, all that. Yeah, yeah. On the other side, which is now Sony. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's a, it's an interesting world we live in. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love Los Angeles for yeah. all the filmmaking that goes on here. And oh yeah. At every level and yeah. Yeah. So um, do, do you uh, do you anticipate uh, anything on the horizon, technology wise, for, for for sparking your interest? Oh well, all the VR stuff looks pretty insane. I you know I think somebody's already probably done a stop motion VR. Nope. but Oh, they haven't. I nope. thought I saw somebody had got done that. Well, you you can you need you to do can, that. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I knew somebody was thinking there, about it. It's, there's, it's stuff is obvious. going on. Yeah. Stuff is going on that I, I just don't. I don't feel right talking about it because I don't want to get. I don't want to. Something like that yeah. is obviously going to be in the food chain. Been, I mean, there it, has you know. been. You see, this is what I hate when they say 360 degrees. Uh huh. Because you say 360 degrees, you get that that's a circle, right? Right. So then they say 360 degrees and they're talking about a sphere. Okay. That's wrong. Even though they say 360 degrees, it's really strange. So the VR is actually not the 360, it's actually a sphere. Okay. So it's half that. There's been, well, it's more than that because it's, it's pi. Okay. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. 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 It's it's infinite in a sense, so it's an infinite circle, but a uh, sphere. But the problem is, um, uh, when you talk like VR, a lot of people think 360, and they think, oh, it's all this other stuff. But then there's there's people that have done the 360 degrees in one plane. Does it make okay, sense? Yeah. So if you turn your head left and right, they've done that plane, but you can't move your head up and down. Right. Right. So it's a strip kind of. Yeah. That's been done for stop motion, but has only been done. This lady did it for her in a classroom or we have a link on it on the website, I believe. Oh, somewhere. cool. And if we don't, I'll put it back up. But um, uh, it was it was just a test that person did. I did a 360 degree sphere test. Oh, wow. For a project. And um, it failed. Oh, no. It was bad. It was a bad <laughs> fail. And the reason it was <laughs> failed because the um, I have a 360-degree HDRI setup for when I do CGI. Okay, right. So it takes a 360-degree photograph. My concept was, oh, I'll just take multiples of this using the same technology, and it'll work. No, it doesn't work because the focal length and the focal distance is wrong. Yeah. Um, it's great for doing environments, uh, stages. You know, I can stick the device in the middle of the stage, and I can take a photograph of the whole stage, the whole stage and I yeah. can composite that in as a reflection map onto the CG objects. Right. But uh, when you're trying to put it in a six by six stage and your focal distance is six feet, yeah. you cut that focal distance in half, you're screwing yourself. Yeah. You know, and everything's out of focus and it was just a nightmare. Oh so, yeah. I believe that. I think it, it's yeah. got going to have, you know. So we need to have uh, uh, specific types of lenses to be able to do that 360 degree right. stop motion or you need to do it on a, such a huge scale 
that it won't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Trying to do it with, yeah, one-to-one puppets yeah. or something. Yeah. So <laughs> Six-foot puppets. So those GoPros, which there's a GoPro uh, 360 yes. system that Google has created with uh, GoPro. Yeah, maybe a couple different gestations there's, of that. D- there's definitely a bunch of them because you can actually do it with, uh, and this is funny, you can do it with four cameras or right. no, five cameras, five cameras. Because you get the left, right, all the way around, and then top and bottom. Right. And you can cheat it, too, with wide-angle lenses. Uh, and then the other one is, uh, then they do like an eight. It's a weird configuration. But anyway, the point is, the focal distances on those suck as well. Yeah. So you can't have things straight up in front of the lens. Well, we've got to do some proprietary designing again. Come on, like John. It let's used do to this. be like how it was. You'd have to design. <laughs> you know, stuck. I remember Doug Freeze designing rigs for Jacques Cousteau that had to go underwater or oh, things yeah. that had to go you know, through a tunnel or something. So. Yeah. I don't People want to do give, it. You know? I don't want to give away too many of my concepts, but I have a, I have a way of cheating it. I have okay. A way of cheating it. We'll talk off off camera about okay. it because it's a it's a secret. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I have I a way of hear. of cheating it out because you, if you want to if you want to do a stop motion thing in 360 degrees, you need to you need to basically use all your tricks in your bag. It sounds like it. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot going on. Yeah. And lighting, I can't even imagine. That's one of the things I, you and I will have to team up on this. I, I will not. Be we'll have to, to hide light. I mean, they'll you have gotta to hide them. integrate it into the set. Set, exactly. Yeah. So if you're doing a street, it's got to be the street lights. Mm-hmm. But the other thing, too, is you can composite do the green screen, but it has to be completely. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't even imagine the, the roto on that yeah. alone would be insane. Right. Because it's four, you're going to be four different shots that you Well, need how to, do you yeah. roto in 360? I don't know. You know, I know. You're th- asking me. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I know this. I know you, you can do it in Nuke. You can, uh-huh, you can sure. roto in there. Um, you can roto in uh, After Effects, but it's going to be flat. Yeah. It's not going to be a. You won't You're be able to put VR that. lenses on and be able to watch it. Uh, it's not to my knowledge. I'm sure there's a plug-in or something that you can add to have view the VR, but oof. it's difficult. That's going to be a difficult medium. Just the render times and everything with all that footage oh, yeah. from so many cameras and oh yeah, Ooh. just stitching it together. I know they've got software, but well, a friend know. of mine uh, that I, a coworker that I work with, her professor from college, or is college or from somewhere else, uh, somebody she's associated with, wrote a script for uh, a programming script for in python for nuke which takes all the camera data and stitches the whole thing together okay wow so yeah it can be done yeah it's just nuts yeah <laughs> <laughs> well we'll let the nerds work on that one for yeah, a while. yeah right. <laughs> maybe they'll come up with something that we can do a use. whole new level of nonsense <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know and then it comes into the integration like how are you going to use this vr technology are you going to sit in your bedroom and watch something or are you going to sit in a chair and it's going to be interactive? Or are you going to walk around in it? Or what, what are you going to do with it? Personally, I, I, I think you're going to have contact lenses or glasses at some stage that are that, going to sure. get integrated. You're no longer going to have to wear this huge bulky thing on your head. It's going to, right. your, your body is going to fuel the, from the electrical impulse of your body will fuel the lens, right? Yeah. Contact yeah. lens. And then uh, and the image doesn't have to be super strong because it's going to be on your on your eyeball okay and like the google glasses or something like something that? similar know. but but in this in a sense that uh it'll look real yeah you know yeah and, and then probably be voice activated or something some kind of thing that you're like your iphone or something you talk into it your apple watch your apple watch <laughs> something you know yeah god only knows but i mean i i think that's really cool technology it's way we're way away from that i mean we're like maybe 100 to 200 years away from that even though yeah. everybody's like oh yeah it's down the it's corner right. yeah. no they knew about planes they 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 believed in planes like 100 yeah. years before we even created the first glider they, that's they were, true they were imagining it trying to figure it out and they couldn't even figure it out and then the wright brothers went oh hey let's make gliders well, we're probably stuck with the one that you stick your phone in for now, you know, your yeah. smartphone. You yeah. just put that right in your right on. whatever. Well, that. have you seen the Oculus Rift? Uh, not in person, I don't think. Yeah, yeah that's I pretty to, neat. It's yeah. pretty neat. But um, it's, it's, it it, we're, we're a ways off from full integration into our systems right. and stuff. Because it's going to be in your heads-up display on your motorcycle helmets. Oh, my God. You're already starting to do that. <laughs> right? So as you're driving down the road, you'll have a radar that's attached to your, to your bike. It sends right. a signal to your helmet, and so you can turn all the lights off on your bike, and as you're driving, you'll see in the heads-up display a virtual 360-degree 300, environment that's digital. That, oh, man. So you don't even need lights anymore. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. So if it's completely dark outside, you can see if there's a log in your way or an animal walking across the street. It's pretty nuts. So the same technology is going to be in your car. 
Yeah, that's nuts. That's pretty oh, cool. Let's be hopefully mm. make things safer. No, we're still gonna be stupid and drive. In the trees and stuff, yeah, and, yeah, and, <laughs> and drive like maniacs, drink too much coffee in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the meth fueled drivers of Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like so many situations. How did they even end up like that? You know, oh, how did yeah. they do that? Like you're in your car is in a building, your car is in a house. Like, what were you doing? Yeah, drinking probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so sad. Well, that's how we lost Fred, right? Yeah, yeah. sadly, he sure did. He. Yeah, he was uh, in a solo car accident out there by a studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know how those guys were. They had these uh, cop cars and stuff, you know, that they were they would buy used cop cars, those Impalas. And mm -hmm. they were, you know, they would play games. Him and there was a guy, Stuart, uh, that they were always, like, driving. Both of them had those. And they were always peeling out or, like, you know, doing donuts and stuff like that. So they were just a little bit wild. And I know that. He was probably goofing around uh, when he when he um, you know came off the freeway. He came off mm. of an exit out there in uh, East Pasadena, headed towards the studio where he lived. And yeah, sadly, I think he his back tire clipped like the median and spun him. Oh, and then no. the steering wheel kind of came into the place where he was to, to his driver's seat. So yeah, that was a really rough call, man. I it was so uh, that was really sad to get that call and know that like. You know, because we had done so much work. Like, I haven't had a director come and challenge mm -hmm. me like Fred did since right. then, and I wish I did. Mm -hmm. I really miss that. And yeah, you know, it's, it's, and you know, he was a great guy. You know, he had all that energy and stuff. He didn't always do things the way I thought he should do them. You know, he wasn't very technical. He didn't care. You know, he was like, I would just shoot it. You know, he, it doesn't matter if it's daylight yeah. or tungsten. What, yeah. Who cares? He'll fix it until it's in. I was yeah, like, yeah. no, that's important. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I feel a lot of times. You know? <laughs> just shoot the damn thing. Yeah. He'll he fix was, it later. He was like that, but it got him there. You know, it got yeah. it done. And, and like all the things I learned out there, and a lot of people learned a lot of things from Fred. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, that worked with him went on and had success in whether it was art or more stop motion yeah. or even just filmmaking and stuff. So, um, yeah, he was an inspiration and he was one of a kind, you know, mm. he could do a backflip just standing there, you know, just, mm. you know, that kind of thing. You oh, know? Wow. <laughs> did you, uh, did you work on bump in the night? You no, I knew some that people that did. I, yeah, I knew some people day. that did. Uh, Matt Willis was a musician, uh, who I got to know and we did a stop motion project with him it was a music video and it was mm -hmm. pretty cool he made the puppets and stuff he had learned some stuff on bump in the night and was he actually was living in the back house behind the house i was living in in uh echo park silver lake at the time and he uh he built all these sets and stuff and he and by the time the yard was filling up with sets i was like all right i guess we have to go shoot this stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> you yes. gotta get this out of my yard Definitely. so we took it all out to fred's and fred loaned us uh whatever i guess we needed we used his studio and got it done and it was a pretty interesting piece the song the music was good matt's a, a great musician i think he moved back up to san francisco oh wow i don't think he works in stop motion anymore per se mm. but yeah. That was a cool little project. Yeah. What do you think of this whole Kickstarter thing going on nowadays? I mean, Everybody I think just trying to, instead of because in the old days you didn't have any money, you just did it, right? Yeah, you either had to do it or somebody had to fork up the cash. Somebody had to borrow money from their dad or, or something. Right, right. You know? Now everybody's just going online and kickstarting it, and it it seems it seems cool, but it seems bad at the same time. Like people thinking that they can just get money. Just oh, I have a project. Give me yeah, money. So, yeah, it kind of gives people entitlement to do, make their passion projects your problem mm. kind of thing, you know what I mean? But but at the same time, it is enabling a lot. And uh, But I'm not such a fan of it. I like more traditional studio structure. Yeah. I like, you know, I don't think everything needs to be union, but I like that structure that comes from, like, everybody gets a, a meal after six hours and that sort of thing, you mm -hmm. know. I, so I like, you know, so, you know, but raising your own money, I mean, more power to you. Oh, you do. It's yeah. it's nice to have that venue, and if you have something that, if your idea is that good, and that people really want to like send their money into you, and you have enough juice on the internet to yeah. to, to draw it in. Well, I, Phil Tippett, power. Phil Tippett production. He did that Mad God, the first one, and it was it was like amazing how much money he raised. I think five hundred thousand dollars or something. Oh yeah, I mean, it's that's huge, great. huge yeah. amount of money. And then uh, Anomalisa, I think, raised about five hundred thousand as well. Ah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, but I think they, I know they went way over that. They budget. had to, yeah. You had to make a feature, you're gonna blow through five hundred yeah. grand. But you could you can make a five hundred grand uh, live action live feature. action feature yeah. with oh, some yeah. stop motion effects in it, but you can't do a hundred percent stop motion unless you live in like Illinois and all your friends are helping you. Out. 
It just depends. Yeah. You know, if, or you, yeah. And no one's getting paid. Right. <laughs> yeah. You have to rake some people over the coals to get yeah. that. There's been going. a few productions in, in the world that I've, I've heard of that have had a budget, went beyond their budget because of bad management, and then the employees in those specific countries didn't get paid, but the people that were outside of that country did get paid Ooh. because they had, like, I think Sweden or, or Switzerland, one of the, maybe both, they have a, a thing where if you go to this specific government, or not government, if you go to a specific country to work on a production and the production fails, meaning they stop paying you because they go out of budget, the government will flip the bill. Oh, wow. On your end, whichever government you're from. I don't think it's that's like a the United States fund. government. It's not the United <laughs> States government at all, but it's, it's a European thing. And I think it's to, to make sure that, like, you know, people stay employed. And mm-hmm. Well, it's nice. Thing. I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of times in Hollywood, it's real bad about this, it's just throwing the crew right under the bus and driving it over them a few times. What <laughs> is that? I you don't know understand I mean? it at all, but... Being below the line, I you know it's you know we see it people, when you're directing or you're producing and stuff. I, I don't think you see it that way. You just mm-hmm. you, you see people with more like they're your pawns in a chess game mm-hmm. or something. But I think that's wrong, and I, I think that's definitely a sign of a of a, a weak you know. Yeah, well, it's like getting pizza every single day on production. I, yeah, I'm sick not, of pizza, man. Stop ordering pizza. It's been the fifth day of pizza. I don't want pizza anymore. You yeah, that's I mean? not nice, you know. And yeah. how do you expect your crew? I mean, you are only as good as your crew. Exactly. And so, you yeah. know, the, well, the, the respect. You have to respect the people that you work with. Yeah. You I mean, give what you want to take. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and they're going to, if you do, I mean, I've found it a million times. I've been on the lowest budget things, but you be human and stuff with your crew. And then the crew will like, Instead of saying, hey, we're going into overtime, they'll like the producer might be saying something like, we have to stop because we're going to hit overtime. And then the crew is going to turn around and is like, we're not stopping. We have to get this scene. Yeah. And when you see that happen, you know you've treated your crew right. Well, and the cool. producer can be like, I can't believe this is happening. But yeah. you, you know, but it, it but you. You know, you haven't beat us up yet. Yeah, you know? yeah, totally. <laughs> so we're gonna take care of you. You know. Yeah, yeah. You That's know? smart. That's a good way of dealing with things. I, absolutely, and, so, and those are how the good, you know, the good projects go. You know, because yeah. it's every production doesn't have the money, right? And we get that, you know. But it, it's not. That doesn't mean like, you know, start cracking the whip, you know, mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. beat people up because you know you can do that for a minute, but if you if you're on a longer project or something, they're just gonna. Oh, yeah. It's gonna come out somewhere down well, the line. I think part of the part of the problem happens when people come right out of college and they and they did a project for like a thousand dollars of their own money, and they had these kids that wanted to help them, so those kids volunteered and they didn't have to pay them. So your thousand dollars goes to materials and food. Yeah, and then and then they come out of that project. Uh, I did this project, and then they get a, a bigger production, yeah, for a lot more money. And they've never managed things properly in their life. Yeah. And they, they don't go, know the proper they don't know the protocol. Proper, the protocol. Protocol. And no one's getting paid. Or if they're getting paid, they're getting paid very little, like minimum wage. Which yeah. you sh- it's sad. I've actually had to pay people minimum wage on a project before. It happens, you know. It sure does. It does. Yeah. But, you know, if it's only a week long, if it's a week's project. They got paid. They got paid. I mean, how about how many have you done where you didn't get paid? I mean, I get that exactly. call all the time, oh. even still. And it's tough. You yeah, know? yeah. But, I mean, at least they're getting paid. But you make sure you feed them. And yeah. you make sure that you give them proper hours of work and rest and, and make them happy. You yeah. Know? Treat them like they're real snacks. people. It's weird, but snacks make a world go around. Oh, yeah. When you're sitting there working all day long, you need to eat something. It's like, uh, do you got anything to munch on? No? Well, we're in this production. I'm only making $5 an hour. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> you know what on. I mean? At least bring yeah, water. Yeah, and, yeah. You know. Well, yeah. the, that Aquabats production that I, I, I ran, um, that, was, that was very low. Very low budget. The Aquabats actually were struggling to get, and I can talk about this because the network's gone, but they were struggling to get funding for their their second season Oof. and they had huge ratings their first season their first season was phenomenal it was amazing production the band was great the producers were great everybody was really cool um they played lucy Goo- lucy goosey with the visual effects supervisor so <laughs> the visual effects supervisor would be sitting there talking to somebody and they'd already started shooting and he's like i didn't approve the shot yeah what are you doing you know so oh, yeah. stuff like that and, uh, uh <laughs> it, it was a fun production season one season two they moved the whole production to utah Okay. Because they need to get the uh, the tax write off. Oh, the credit. The yeah, credit. Yeah. The tax <laughs> credit. And I always was like, that's such a bad idea. Because when you, you, even though you are here in L.A., you move a production from here to somewhere else. It's going to cost you money to move it. Oh yeah. It'll probably cost you the same amount to move it than it is just to stay. 
And it's just like, oof. So you're going to get maybe half of that back? I don't know. I don't know what the exact numbers are, but it's... it's and the it's, talent pool, you're losing the whole talent pool and of Los Angeles. That's what killed it. That's yeah, what killed course. season two because yeah. they, they lost all that talent pool. I got called to do uh, the stop motion sequence. Um, there's a guy I work with, Brent Johnson, really good guy, really good puppet maker, fun animator, um, mm-hmm. good guy to work with. He uh, he was in Africa doing uh, a children's. Uh, he, he has a church group that he goes with to Africa, and he, he educates kids, teaches them English, has fun with them, whatever. Um, in the sense of like playing games and just educating them overall, maybe some Bible study. I don't know. Um, I think he also does the whole thing with like giving them water, you know, digging wells, that type of stuff. Um, he uh, was in Africa at the time. I got the call and I said, "Hey, we want you and Brent to produce this thing." I'm like, well, Brent's in, Brent's in Africa. He can't produce it from Africa. Right. So you might as well just have me start producing it now, and then I'll have him come on as an animator and whatever. And I'm like, that's great. We also want you to do all the the stop-motion sequences of like the ants, the monsters, the Harryhausen-esque oh. stuff. And I was like, oh, this is great. Okay, I'll do great. that. Sure, sure. And then give us a quote for the price. Uh-oh. And I was like... What do you mean give you a quote? You're just not going to tell me what the budget. Tell me what the budget is and I'll tell you if I can do it or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cuz that's how you that's how you play that game. You can't just be like, "Oh, it's X amount of dollars." Right. You got to be like, "Tell me what you can afford and I'll tell you if I can do it or not." Well, they quoted me for six episodes. They said $2,000. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, "Wait a minute, $2,000 an episode?" Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. If 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 I love you guys enough and if it's only like one shot an episode, sure. You know, but they yeah. were like, they were like, literally, no, the whole season for two grand. Oh man! And I went, no, that's not going to happen, guys. I can't, I can't physically do that because that's 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 three months to four months worth of work for two thousand dollars. You got to charge by the second calculate. of animation. It's well, like how much per second? Well, I know. I do it by the day. Yeah. So there how you go. how day, yeah. how many days is it going to take to make this? And and then I know what my day rate is. I'm not going to say it online, of course. Sure. But uh, it's well over two thousand, very higher, way higher than two thousand. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but my day rate, you know, I can calculate from that. Going, this is how much I cost, and now let me add the material costs. And this is a funny subject because no one ever talks about this. You yeah. Know? So I, I'm open about this. I don't mind talking about this. But so I will be materials cost this. My day rate is this. This is how many days it's going to take. Boom. That's the cost, and then I'm also going to add ten percent. Yeah. Because you don't know. It's in tendency of whatever happens. And you're also going to pay me 60 to 70% up front. Yeah, you're going to have to. You're gonna have, yeah, you and, can't start. And the the crazy thing is if if it's going to be a bigger production, I'll be like, you're going to have to pay me 100% up front in some cases. And then with the Aquabats, I had to say that with them. So they gave me that one sequence because otherwise it would have come right out of my pocket. And in, yeah. in all honesty, uh, I, I put about two grand into that project. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's I, tough when you have to put your own money yeah. or they or they don't pay you what I think we had to and stuff. I, I think tough. I negotiated them to up to 10, 10 grand for the sequence. And then I was like, it's going to be, it's gonna, I can do it for about 10 grand. I have to hire some people, so I'm still going to take a bath on this. Yeah. And then, um, and then I ended up putting about two grand of my own money into it. Because Stop I had to, I had so to get it done, you know, and I signed so a contract intense. with them. Yeah, and we went over. So it was really crazy. Is like they wanted that that stuff done like tomorrow. Yeah, everybody does. And it's like you realize that it, I have to build everything. We have cities. Uh, we have. You know, they don't realize they don't. that the, the people that will or want stop like, oh, we just need a couple seconds of that cute animation that you do. And, mm. you know, it's like just a couple seconds or like yeah, just, yeah. A, just a, or just 10 minutes. You want to put you know? it on and a white like, background? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to tell people that, yeah, per camera, you're lucky to get 10 seconds a day, you yeah. know, or, yeah. or, and, and I used to say like, well, roughly, I don't know how, you know, what the scope of what we're going to try to do, but roughly, you know. Think of it as a thousand dollars a second. I mean, that's a place to start for some basic, you know. Animation well, that's a stuff. realistic. A thousand dollars a second is yeah. is definitely realistic for a big production or bigger production. Same big because I've seen productions bigger than that. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could go either way. Thousand dollars to save is on a that, or you cheap could, production. Yeah, that's for yeah. just like sort of a regular, like pretty good, like one set. Exactly. But yeah, you want to get into some like you know groundbreaking or epic animation it's going to be more like 2000 well i told you about that that one uh, disney channel production i did oh yeah you mentioned so i've done two disney productions one was disney channel with the fred figglehorn and the other one was uh blank of animation love story so blank one was great they had they had a good decent budget we did that that was that was fun that's nice a lot of found objects in a sense uh now the fred figglehorn christmas is creepy that went from like oh yeah we need three minutes music video and i was like oh okay 30 grand you know 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's about reasonable. That, that's, that's pretty good. That's just that's just me. That's cheap, actually. Yeah, it's I cheap. Would say. That's really cheap, and that's yeah. just me in the garage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Know, over three months. Yeah. Done. Three minutes, three months, just me in the garage building and ma- animating everything. Done. Easy. Three grand. I mean, yeah. 30, gra- 30, 30 grand. 30 grand. Yeah. 30 grand. That's good. Um, then it went down to, and they kept whittling it away. Oh, yeah. The time. And I'm like, well, you know, we're running out of time, and as we run out of time, Money's gonna have to increase because I've got to hire people. So as we, you know, they went, no, 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 no. We actually have to reduce the amount of money. And I went, well, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then finally, people grapple with that stuff. Yeah, it's and, like it's hard. It's a hard medium, and yeah. somebody has to pay the price. And I told them to go around. I said, go around to all the studios and get quotes from everybody, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. And they did, and they were like, John, we didn't realize that you were asking like a tenth. Yeah, you're doing us a huge favor. Huge favor, and I was because a really f- a good friend of mine at the time. I don't know about it anymore, but at the time it was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, dude, I'm trying to help you out here. And that's the low. And you're talking Disney Channel. Yeah. So I mean, you should be able on. to afford yeah. that, you know? And uh, and then it got down to, we had three weeks left. And I went, I haven't animated anything. You haven't given me any money. And there's been no direction. Uh-huh. And you want me to give you a three-minute music video in three weeks. It's not going to happen. No. Dude. It's not for the amount of money. And he goes, well, can you give me 30 seconds? And I went, I can give you 30 seconds. How much, yeah. do, how much do you want to spend? Because I know you don't have any money now. Because you whittled me away. He's like, three grand. <laughs> and I literally gave him the middle finger and said, okay, fine. I'll help you out. But it's a favor. <laughs> While you're giving him the middle finger. <laughs> While I'm giving him the middle finger. I'm like, yeah. And, and then uh, they PayPal'd me the money. PayPal took a week to get the money. <laughs> PayPal. PayPal'd me the money. No. Of all things. Instead of giving me a check, they yeah, PayPal'd yeah. me. <laughs> and then it sat there for a week. Of course, because it's got to process through PayPal. Then it went into my bank account, which took another X amount of days. So then I had to go buy all the materials. I bought all the materials. I was building. I had. I literally had a week and a half to build and animate. And then the last day, I told you part of this. I, I don't think I finished the story there. But the last day, um, we had three hours to turn it in. I'm animating and handing the director who's sitting on the couch behind me while I'm animating the um, the sequences as I pop them out really cheap fast animation it took, I animated for 24 hours straight and I took Ugh. a break my friend Melissa animated some of that stuff and I'm handing him the shots in 24 hours after the build and I hadn't slept in like 3-4 days oh it's so rough and I, get, I remember handing him the last shot and I go I'm done and he goes you're done and I went yeah I'm done and he's like okay <laughs> he's kind of shocked he's yeah. kind of shocked he's like i think we have an hour to turn this in <laughs> oh man know? so he's rendering it turning it in he turned it in for final approval and they all went yes yeah, fine but it was one of the stressful things like i built the set four by four set wasn't big at all and we just had to keep rotating the set and rotating the camera oh angle. yeah that's crazy oh yeah, yeah. it's well, tough the wife's home the wife's home so uh and that means it's probably about 220 oh it's 217 okay so you gotta you gotta get i gotta go grab my wife from the airport yeah 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 Yeah. well john it was great sitting here and hanging out with you and talking shop and you're definitely going to come back okay great and and i'm definitely going to work with you in the future we're going to we're going to do do some stuff yeah i feel like that well great thank you for having me hey and so if they want to check out your stuff it's rocketfilms.com rocketfilms.com there's a reel on there if you press the videos button and then the the warehouse the studio downtown has a different site and that's 1333willow.com cool 1333willow.com awesome awesome yeah and uh, let's talk some some again again some, some time uh, i'm stuttering now it's definitely at lunchtime <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk again sometime soon sounds great cool. thank you awesome thank you all right <laughs>